Hello and welcome. In today's video, we're going to list some games that still can't run on their respective emulators, either due to limitations of the emulators themselves or even problems related to the game's own development. So, without further delay, let's jump straight into the video. Starting with Dolphin, which is currently the best emulator for the Nintendo Wii and GameCube. Many people imagine that, because it covers two different consoles, it must have a huge list of problematic games. But in reality, the opposite is true, between both systems, there is only one single game that does not run correctly, which is 1080 degrees snowboarding. The gameplay you're seeing in the background was captured on a Nintendo 64 emulator because Dolphin can't handle this specific version. And the reason is simple, this version of 1080 degrees is a Nintendo 64 game running through the virtual console, meaning its emulation inside another layer of emulation, which naturally complicates everything. Other than that, Dolphin remains one of the greatest surprises in the emulation scene. Another impressive emulator is PCSX2. In the most recent versions, the only truly problematic games are the titles from the Final Fantasy XI series, which was expected since it's a fully online game. Besides those, there are two titles that stand out for their lack of compatibility, Stuntman, a lesser known game where you work as a stunt driver performing scenes with cars, in my case, it runs normally without major issues, and Marvel Nemesis, Rise of the Imperfects, which does reach the menu but cannot go in-game. Vertex explosions appear constantly, tanking the frame rate and making it impossible to see anything. Another title that was problematic for a long time, Driver 3, was finally fixed, and the gameplay in the background shows that it's now fully playable on PCSX2 with no graphical or performance issues. Moving on to an emulator that doesn't have the same level of accuracy as Dolphin or PCSX2, Zemu. According to the project's official website, it is capable of running about 80% of the original Xbox library. But based on what I've tested in previous videos, that simply isn't true. The developers consider anything that reaches in-game to be playable, even if it's completely broken. So if you plan to use Zemu, keep that in mind. There are many problematic games, but I've chosen two more extreme examples. The first, which you're seeing in the background, is 007, from Russia with Love, a great game that fortunately exists on other platforms, so this isn't the only way to play it. In Zemu, no matter what hardware you have, the game suffers from constant slowdown. The graphical issues aren't too serious but performance is heavily affected. The second example represents an even more common issue in Zemu, full-on freezes, exactly like what happens with Def Jam, Fight for New York, which simply locks up at some point and doesn't allow you to continue. Now moving on to Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator, which unfortunately has slower development, mostly due to the lack of active contributors. Most games still suffer from low emulation accuracy. To better understand which titles were working, I recently watched a video from a channel listing playable and non-playable exclusives, but ended up disappointed. First of all, be careful where you get your information. Some people run a game for one minute and immediately conclude whether it's playable, without researching configurations or testing properly. A good example is the game in the background, Rumble Roses XX, which that video classified as unplayable. In my test, even with vertex explosions and some lighting issues, it works. I played for more than 20 minutes and didn't find any problems besides those. The same video also claimed that Far Cry Instincts was unplayable due to vertex explosions. Once again, the author clearly didn't test the game properly. I played for more than 15 minutes in two different stages and did not encounter that bug. The game isn't perfect, there's excessive brightness and the water doesn't seem to render correctly, but it's far from the situation shown in the video. If you want to play it on Xenia you can. Another game I'd place in the playable with caveats category is Ace Combat 6, another Xbox 360 exclusive. It still has some issues, especially with the terrain. There's an option in the emulator that should fix that, but in my case it didn't work. It's possible that the most recent Xenia version broke that fix, but the gameplay is on screen so you can see the current state of the title. If you want to try fixing it, just change the ground fix parameter in the emulator's configuration file. Now let's talk about the truly problematic games. Forza Motorsport 4, for example, once had a ROM completely modified by me some time ago, specifically to allow the game to run with as few issues as possible. There is even an older version of the emulator that people still use solely for this game because it avoids random crashes. The problem is that the performance of that version is much worse compared to today's Xenia Canary builds. Running the game on Xenia Canary now introduces several issues, car thumbnails that sometimes don't load. Selecting certain vehicles may cause freezes, and most importantly, random crashes during gameplay. 
In short, trying to play Forza Motorsport 4 today will definitely give you headaches. And to wrap up the Xenia section, let's talk about two games you always ask me to test, WWE 2011 and WWE 2013. Both titles require specific configurations that cannot be applied through Xenia Manager. You have to edit the text files manually. Even then, the issues remain, characters failing to load, the game breaking either when entering a match or in the middle of it, as well as severe texture rendering glitches. So unfortunately, these two titles are still very difficult to run. Moving on to RPCS3, things change quite a bit depending on the CPU you're using. On weaker processors, several games suffer from bottlenecks. But let's assume you're running everything on a high-end PC. In that case, I honestly thought my biggest nightmare would be God of War Ascension, since the last time I tested it, the game had massive drops, going down to 20 FPS. But in recent tests, those issues have almost completely disappeared. Today, the game runs mostly at 60 FPS the entire time, except when the emulator is compiling shaders. However, Gran Turismo 6 continues to be a very different story. Even with powerful hardware and all recommended settings applied, you may still run into flickering textures or random texture pop-ins on the ground and even in the sky. On top of that, it's an extremely heavy game on RPCS3, and the performance usually stays below 60 FPS. Another title that has evolved a lot, but still has issues, is Ratchet Clank Future, a crack in time. Performance has improved dramatically, and today it runs acceptably even on mid-range PCs. However, instability is still its biggest enemy. Depending on the area, you may encounter vertex explosions, and even more frustrating, random crashes that can occur at any moment. Now moving on to Shad PS4, which is definitely one of the emulators that has evolved the most in 2025. Even so, it's still far from perfect. While much of its development has focused on running Bloodborne, and that game really is already in an impressive state, many other titles are also becoming playable. One of them is God of War 3, which many believe will be the first major PS3 exclusive to run decently outside of RPCS3, since RPCS3 still has extremely high requirements for this game. In its current state, from the footage you're seeing, everything looks perfect, but in practice, many textures are still missing, several environments don't render properly, some fonts simply disappear. And there are objects missing throughout various areas. Lighting is also inconsistent, even when performance is good. Still, you can clearly see that the game is very close to becoming fully playable. Another game that is already in a very advanced state is Drive Club. Despite the beautiful gameplay clips circulating out there, full of detail, looking perfect, and seemingly without any visual flaws, the reality is very different. The game still suffers from instability and tends to crash during random races. So, even though it's a gorgeous game, it's still not practical to play. After all, you'll probably need to restart the emulator every two or three races. Before we continue with the games that still have issues on Nintendo Switch emulators, don't forget to leave a like if you're enjoying the video. And if you want this format to become a series here on the channel, drop your comment. And of course, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing to keep up with everything new. If you want to buy original games while saving a lot, check out Instant Gaming, the digital store that sells games for various platforms, such as PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Get games of all genres with discounts of up to 95%. You'll also find a variety of gift cards and credits for other services. You can pay for your order through your credit card on a website with a 4.7 rating on Trustpilot. You're buying games directly from Instant Gaming, not from other retailers. If you encounter any issues, Instant Gaming offers 24-7 support. And this month, Instant Gaming is offering a special discount on Wuchang, with a price at least $10 cheaper than on Steam, making it the lowest price ever for the game. What are you waiting for to save? Links in the description. For our Nintendo Switch tests, we chose Eden because it currently offers the best overall compatibility. But we also tested games on Citroen and Ryubing to compare how each emulator handles them. My original plan was actually to start this video with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 because in previous emulator builds, this open field area you see in the background could barely stay above 20 FPS. However, at some point the game was fixed and with dynamic FPS enabled, I can now keep a stable 60 FPS almost all the time. Honestly, what I once considered the biggest nightmare of the Nintendo Switch has become one of the biggest positive surprises, working better than ever in emulation. But with Mortal Kombat 1, the story changes completely. Since it's a game built on Unreal Engine, Anyone who follows Switch emulation knows this is one of the biggest villains when it comes to emulating Nintendo's hardware. No surprises here, it runs poorly, with constant performance drops that make it impossible to maintain a stable 60 FPS. 
This alone turns away anyone who enjoys fighting games, because your combos will drop, and the experience simply isn't worth it. The only upside is that the game has a Windows version, but unfortunately, De Novo still hasn't been cracked. Another title that also uses De Novo and that many people tried to run through emulation is Sonic Frontiers. The Switch version is already a visual nightmare, full of low-resolution objects, and overall a very poorly made port. Still, for those trying to play it on emulators, the situation is even worse. On Citroen and Eden, the game doesn't even properly start in Vulcan, and if you try running it in OpenGL, it might work. But nobody knows if it will last 2 minutes or 10 before crashing. At some point, it will crash. That's a guarantee. Shadow Generations is also still protected by De Novo, and many people resort to emulation because of that, which is why it made the list as well. This is yet another game with a weak, low-resolution port on the Switch, and getting it to run depends a lot on luck and on having the right emulator configuration. On Citroen, I can play for a few hours without the game breaking on its own, but only if I set CPU accuracy to high to improve stability. If you have a weaker PC, this can cost you part of your performance. On Eden and Ryubing, the situation is worse, even with the correct settings. The game can crash at any moment without warning. Which other games do you think should be on this list? Leave a comment. I want to hear your thoughts. And that wraps up this week's video. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.